Today I'm going to show you how to insert a graph, which is part of the instructions that are going to happen. First I find the place I need to insert the graph, then I go up here to insert, go down to chart, I'm going to choose a line. We're going to change that anyway, but we need a chart to get started. Um, it fills the page, I don't need it to fill the page, so I'm going to shrink it. And now, the most important thing, editing my data. It creates your own um, sheets, which is a spreadsheet document, with the data that they wanted to use, but I want to use different data. So I'm going to transfer the table uh, to this. So here's the table. Here's the data that went into the table, and I'm transferring it to these numbers so my, my graph changes. I'm going to scoot that over so that I can see all the words inside there. And then I'm going to use my tab key to move uh, from left to right and add pressure. And then the parentheses represents the units. So my units of pressure are kilopascals and my units of amount are moles. If you hit return, I can start a new row and so here, so 0 0.5, whoops, 0 0.5, return. Remember, return goes down, return, return, return. Um, the data for the pressure is 50, 90, 160, and 190. 50, return, 90, return, 160, return, 190, return. I have an extra graph here, so I'm going to go to this drop-down menu and delete this column. The drop-down menu is right here. Every column has a drop-down menu, and so do the rows. Okay, we need to edit this, so I'm going to go up to the three circles, the little snowman right there, go to Edit Chart, because it doesn't have all of the features I would like. One of the features I would like is to use a more scientific one. Um, honestly, you could click this and things would work out pretty well, but let's uh, actually go through all the steps. So I don't want line, I don't want area, I don't want column or bar or pie graph. I want a scatter plot. A scatter plot just shows data and that's how most um, scientific data is shown. Um, and that's it. That's the graph that we wanted. Uh, the rest of this is what data did you want to select? And we could save that for a different video. I'm going to customize it uh, by um, changing its style. I'm not going to do too much here. Um, in fact, I will not give extra points if your style is suddenly much better. You can change uh, the entire title, you can change, you can add a subtitle, you can change the horizontal title, and you can change the vertical title. Um, a chart title describes what the graph is showing or what the lab was about. The change in pressure as the amount gets lower. And that automatically gets put in there. We're now going to change the horizontal axes. You can start typing to see which axis that is. That's this axis down here and corresponds to this data. So this is the amount of gas in units of moles, which means my vertical axis is the other one, pressure in kilopascals. Again, you can make changes to the format if you want to. The subtitle is to add information about um, more information than would fit on the title um, from the reaction of Mg and HCl. So you could add a little more data, a little more information to the title. The next one we want to do is we want to look at the series. We can change the color of our points. 
um, their size, etc. But most importantly, we want to add a trend line. And I'm going to change this color as well. The trend line represents what um, the data could look like if your results were absolutely consistent. The R value uh, shows you how consistent your information was. The closer this is to one, the better the fit of the points to this line. That is, they should all line up when it's at one. Um, and that's important. The legend is where am I going to put this information? So I can put, I, I don't need to show you that information. It wasn't that helpful. Um, instead of the top, I could put it on the bottom. Uh, I could put it inside the graph. And in this case, I'm going to put it inside and move on. The horizontal axis um, is sort of limited to our data. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to expand it so I can do something called extrapolate, which is, I wonder what, it's just wondering, I wonder what would happen if I only used 0.25 moles or if I used 3 moles. I wonder what would happen um, to my information. And so my graph should tell me that. I need more information on top, so I'm going to click my vertical axis and I'm going to ask it to show everything up to 300 so I can see what's happening to that trend line. So you can show how big the graph is so you can get more information than your actual lab data showed you. And then finally, the number of lines on here is kind of limited. So I'm going to go to count. And instead of that, I'm going to put in six. And that happens to be good. And let's see what seven does. And seven is even better. I got a line at the bottom. And uh, the minor is how many lines do you want in between? I just want one line to happen in between. Um, the minor lines, see, are, are in between the full points. And the major lines are connected to the numbers on the graph. So I'm going to undo that. Um, come back up here. I'm going to do the same thing with the horizontal axes. Just going to switch it to count and do six. And uh, those numbers aren't good. What if I did five? Those aren't good. What if I did seven? I'm just clicking and typing the numbers in. There we go. That's easier to read. And then I want to put one in between. Actually, three may be better. So now I have three minor lines in between. Let's show you those colors again. So those are the minor lines and my major lines, uh, blue. And those are my major lines. And so that the major lines are connected with a number, and the minor lines are just in between and sort of estimated. Undo, undo, undo. And there we go. Now that's a useful graph. We go back to our document that we're going to turn in and we update the plot and there you go it's all done and you can now go answer questions or anything else you need to do